Can I ask a question? Yeah. Where did you get that shirt from? I bought it. Can you turn the stop? Uh -huh. Dog. Are you ready? All right. Um, hi there. My name is Matthew Smith, and I'm a director at Longacre. And uh, on our website, we wanted to do some introductions of the directors, and uh, we were thinking about how to best do that in video form, and we decided to instead of us just talking to the camera that we would be uh, interviewed by our fellow directors and so Louise and Susan have uh, put together a couple questions to interview me and introduce me to uh, to you um, and I have not yet seen the questions and I'm sure that they will be uh, softballs all of them so uh, at this point uh, ladies why don't you get moving Okay, so you were born here, you went to the farm as a teenager and as a staffer. Uh, how did you get here to where you are right now? Yeah, it's a nice specific question with uh, not a long answer at all. Um, how did I get here? Well, uh, I uh, lived here at Longacre uh, because uh, Susan, my, my mother, and um, uh, my father that both lived here. But my mom was running the, the, the camp, Longacre, and I lived here until I graduated from high school at 17 and then decided to uh, leave Perry County because I, I really did not like living in a rural area as a, as a teenager. And I went to college in Connecticut. Um, before that, actually, I took a year off. We decided junior year that I was going to take a year off. Um, and uh, uh, it was sort of an opportunity to travel that we didn't know when I would have again. And I spent uh, six months of that uh, year living in Denver with my, with my cousin. And then the second six months, I went to Bolivia. Uh, my uh, my godmother gifted me with a round trip ticket to Bolivia, and I went to Bolivia and um, to a city called Cochabamba and volunteered with uh, in, at an orphanage um, down there, uh, which was a, a wonderful experience. Although at the moment it seems very very uh, far away. Uh, so then I went to Connecticut College. After college, I moved to New York City, and I lived in New York City for three years. My first job was at, in affordable housing development at Fifth Avenue Committee in Brooklyn. Um, then in 2006, I moved to Boston and was there for two years. Um, and then in 2008, I moved back to Longacre to spend the summer at the farm as a staff. And it was that summer that it occurred to me how uh, wonderful Perry County seemed and how much I wished that I wished then that I could uh, move here so I decided to move back in 2008 and still having no idea that I would uh, join Longacre in a in a more full-time way and then in 2010 I came on in sort of a part-time way and 2011 or 12 something like that in a full-time off-season way and then in um, a year ago January, so January 2012, I became a partner. So here I am. My turn. I'm going to skip down to a question I like, which is, think back on yourself as a teenager at Longacre. What did you enjoy the most? Um, what did I enjoy the most? Well, I think I was here for two summers. I was here in 93 and 94. So those were the summers that I turned 13, summer that I turned 14. And I remember, um, <laughs> what do I remember? Well, um, <laughs> this is funny. Uh, um, what I'm, what I'm trying not to say is that I remember some summer romances that, uh, like, 
I don't know, there were a couple girls who I was totally into that those summers. So that is sort of what I'm giggling about because I don't know whether I can say that. Uh, the what what I really remember though I think is how cool the older kids seemed. They just seemed like worlds, years, decades ahead of me and they were like they I don't know they were probably just 15, 16, 17, something like that but seemed so mature and so with it and they were um, I can remember guys like uh, Davy Jones and Austin Bass being just especially nice to me and n like accepting of me I didn't I don't think I hung out with them a lot but I just remember them being really nice and gracious and sort of in, incorporating me into their social groups and how exciting that was to be hanging out with with older kids and having it be a positive experience. Um, so I'd say those two things. Thanks, Louise. <laughs> what do you like most about Long Acre? Uh, what do I like most about Long Acre? Um, I think I, what I like about Long Acre is what I've always liked about working with kids, which is how uh, sort of how r real they are and how it's like what you see is what you get and there's um, you know when when they are comfortable there's very little hiding that they can do so they you see them for who they are um, and so I've always liked that in kids is that they they're um, they're just so real with you um, and they don't know any other way to be. Um, and I think at Long Acre what's exciting to me is the risks that these kids take. Like everything they do is a risk. Coming to Long Acre is a risk. Trying to drive a tractor is a risk. Sleeping in a new tent with girls or boys that they don't know is a risk. And they just, they just do it all the time. They're so brave, I think. And uh, so sometimes, so they don't know when they don't know any different when they come on these like really big risks where they have to say something comfortable to a friend or they have to say something uncomfortable to a friend after a, after a conflict or something like that and they just go for it and they come out on the other side and being so proud of themselves and everything. I think just to watch that maturation and development process is a real is a, is a real privilege. I don't, you know, it's not often you hang out with adults who are pushing themselves like to that extent so me how is Long Acre relevant in 2014 how is Long Acre relevant well that is a that's a sort of an ongoing topic of conversation um, that's a great question I think that Long Acre is relevant because in education there seems to be especially from the, the political side of education, there seems to be such an extraordinary emphasis on uh, testing and memorization. Um, and I think Long Acre is a lot about process and about uh, character traits or attributes that are really difficult to measure. Um, and I, I'm, my, I, I believe that that uh, communication skills or soft skills or social intelligence or however you want to describe it I think that is really important to us being um, happy and healthy and productive human beings and yet it's, it's paid very little attention in the formal education system and so I think Longacre has an opportunity to uh, supplement in a very significant way the education of uh, of our teenagers and I, and I also believe that because I see this in the national conversation I, I believe that the pendulum is going to swing back toward the kind of work that Long Acre is doing I'm not saying that what we're doing is ultimately schools are going to look like that but I th I think I think schools are going to be paying more attention to these sort of intangibles um, than, than they are now and and uh, I hope that we continue to, to stay relevant and I honestly hope to play a leadership role in in trying to teach other organizations about how to develop 
um, these skills in kids. What is the silliest activity you've ever done with kids at Long Acre? The silliest activity? Uh, I, I think the silliest activity I did with kids was probably with Ellie Kovacs. I don't know what that was. 2009 or... Well, she was not here last year. She was here 2012, so it must have been 2010 because she skipped a year. So 2010, Ellie Kovacs, who was, I don't know what, 13 maybe? Um, in advance of the talent show, I said, I want to do something for the talent show, but I don't really have a talent. And she said, well, why don't we choreograph a dance? And I said, I don't know how to choreograph. And she decided to choreograph a dance, and I think we picked... Um, Kelly Clarkson? No, that was two years ago. We oh. did, four years ago was Lady Gaga, Just Dance. And... Um, she worked me and worked me and worked me and she, I remember her being so critical of how I was, <laughs> how I was moving my hips. She just thought, thought it was just ridiculously, I don't know what, uh, uh, like straight and not dancey. Anyway. Ellie Kovacs and I went out on stage and did Lady Gaga Just Dance. And even to this day, when I, that song comes on, I feel like this adrenaline rush. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. Last question. You are newly married. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How does your wife like living on a farm and being a cattle owner? Oh, my gosh. Um, my wife uh, is is giving Perry County a try um, and I, you know fingers crossed that it works out but she's really diving in and uh, I think sometimes when people come to Perry County they're very conscious of uh, of what Perry County doesn't have uh, it's easy to see what it doesn't have if you're from a metropolitan area I think it's harder to see what Perry County does have and does offer and and she's I think really giving that her uh, her all um, so I think so far she likes it. I think she likes uh, uh, being living on the farm. It reminds her of her childhood when she was visiting her, her grandfather in the summers. Um, I think she likes being near my mom and dad. We think, hopefully, we hope to start a family someday and being near grandparents would make things, I think, a lot easier, especially as she's a, a professional and hopes to continue to work. That balance would be uh, much easier to strike with uh, with grandparents around. She certainly has an affinity for the cows. I don't know that she um, loves uh, some of the the responsibilities that come with the cows, but she likes the uh, the concept of having the cows and being able to put beef in the freezer. I think that's that sort of providing for yourself and having you know as much beef as you as you want and be able to share that bounty with family and friends I think is really special so so far so good all right well thank you very much for that I, I appreciate it and uh, I guess we'll be back soon with Susan's interview and Louise's thank you